What's up, YouTube? Your boy back once again with another sport topic. And today, we're going to talk some football. Because it's football time in Houston. Y'all already know what time it is. It's that time of the year. The greatest time of the year. Football season. Football is back. We got a preseason game on Thursday. I know y'all been missing me, but I've been doing a lot of basketball videos because it's been a crazy basketball offseason. And also, my son's youth football team has started practice, and I'm a coach, so I've been a little busy. So, But, hey, like I said, there's a preseason game Thursday. It news dropping today, so your boy is definitely back. Like I told y'all last night on Soft Sports, Spitz is finally back. So I'm back, baby. Let's get it. Now, let's talk about what happened. And before I get into the subject, I got to give a complete 100% shout out to all my boys out there on Soft Sports. Hey, Hunter, everybody out there, Soft Sports, Sauce Nation. Y'all go check out Sauce Nation if you haven't. Your boy was on there last night. Everybody go check out Sauce Nation. But extremely, got to give a huge shout out to my boy Wink. Because my boy Wink said this months ago. Well, I mean months ago, I mean months ago, if it was February, March maybe, before this was anywhere on anybody's radar, my boy Wink said this and shouted this out, so shout everybody uh, go check out my boy Wink because he said this. When is the amount of time, I forgot how he worded it, but basically he was saying that that, that Deontay Foreman was going to get cut. He was saying how long, before, yeah, that's what it was, how long before Deontay Foreman gets cut. And no, not how long before Deontay Foreman's down this roster. Because he said he's seen the signs coming. And to be honest, if anybody's out there mad or upset or surprised, you don't need to be. Um, and the reason why is because this is a trend. Um, name a third-round pick, especially a third-round pick under Bill O'Brien, that has made it to their third season. It was Knicks, Jalen Strong, Braxton Miller. Deontay Foreman. Now, clearly, I think Deontay Foreman had the most fanfare, mostly probably because you know he went to UT. He said his dad was a Texas, uh, Texas, uh, Houston Texan fan. He's from uh, Texas City and things like that, so he's a local kid. So this one kind of hits a little bit more. Um, I think the person who got the the rawest deal was, in my opinion, Jalen Strong. I thought Jalen never got a real shot because he was playing with with Hoyers and Mallets and and uh. And um, Brock Osweiler, he never got real, uh, a real chance with uh, Deshaun. And he, every time he played, he scored touchdowns in, in, in regular season games. So I would want to see him with Deshaun, but that's a conversation for another day. But this one right here, when it comes to Deontay Foreman, you know, a lot of people been out there. Like, and it comes, I guess it comes out of left field because the way if I, the way if y'all been listening to the the puff pieces that they've been giving out, oh, they're giving Deontay Foreman every chance to be the starting running back. And, oh, Deontay Foreman looks so good. He's so ripped. He's so this. He's so that. Oh, he just looks like he's in shape. And nah, nah, nah. and then two weeks after camp, before the preseason game starts, Deontay Foreman's cut. Not in the middle of camp. Not. The first cuts. I don't even think they do it anymore. I don't even think they do first and second cuts. I think they just do one big cut now. But not right before the season starts. He's cut before the first preseason game. That says something. That says something. This says a lot, actually. And, and also, we got we got to hold both people to the fire. I do believe that Deontay Foreman um, does have issues as far as being... Um, I don't want to say lazy because I know there's rumors of that he's been late to meetings and things like that. That he's not a mature professional. He's he, he's not on the lines of everybody else. And hey, if you I mean, if you want to be 100 percent real, hey bro, listen, it's a job. I know football is a game, but at the end of the day, it's a job. And there's plenty of people who are less talented as in the NFL or in sports. Period. Because they have a hard work ethic. And it's plenty of people who probably could be all-time greats. They're working in oil fields and um, teaching. Or not teaching, but you know, working in oil fields or doing other stuff in jail, selling drugs, whatever the case may be. Because they don't have the work ethic. They don't want to work hard. But pure, from a pure talent standpoint, they probably could be all-time greats at whatever position they was playing. Or whatever sport they was playing. They probably could have been all-time greats. But they never had the heart or the work ethic. So that's on you. That, that 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 that's on you if that's the case. 
and I know I'm pretty like, like nothing is ever a hundred percent. There's always fifty your fault, fifty day fault. But from a Bill O'Brien standpoint, like I said, this is something that's not new. He's done this countless times, and I mean I know we all fans of Justin Reed, and we think just I think Justin Reed is a ball hawk and safety, or potentially be. But hey, he's he has that 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 third round pick stigma on him, and. We third round picks don't do well under Bill O'Brien, and I think this is more so. You you think back to what I've been harping back from the all season. I was asking what about um, Le'Veon Bell. I wanted us to, uh, to draft uh, Travion in the draft in the, uh, as a fourth round pick. I mean, well, I know we have fourth round pick in the, in the third round or fifth round things like that. Why we didn't make certain moves earlier. I brought up a question last night on Soft Sports about Melvin Gordon. Like I said last night, I'm not a huge Melvin Gordon fan. But I like Melvin Gordon more than Lamar Miller. And I would take a combination of Melvin Gordon and Deontay Foreman in the backfield. Now that Deontay Foreman is gone, now you just have Lamar Miller. And please do not come up here and tell me. That Lamar Miller is a pro bowler. Yes, technically he's a pro bowler. Yes, if you go on his Wikipedia page, it's going to say he's a pro bowler. But is Lamar Miller really a pro bowler? Can you really look at Lamar Miller and say he's a pro bowler? Like, let's be honest with ourselves. Do you really look at Lamar Miller and say that he's a pro bowler? Do you? No, you don't. No, 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 you don't. Lamar Miller is going to be one of those people years down the road when you look him up, oh, snap, I ain't know Lamar Miller made a pro bowl. That's what's going to happen 10 years from now. People are going to be like, I didn't know Lamar Miller was a pro bowler. That's what type of pro bowl he had. He was an alternate that you barely got in. He didn't even have 1,000 yards. Come on now. Come be the pro. Come on. Anyway, I'm saying that to say this. Yes, we have troubles off the line. Everybody knows that I feel the biggest issue with the team is the secondary, especially with the opponents that we play this year. But running back is right there now. We was thinking about getting running backs when we thought we had Deontay Foreman. Now we don't even have Deontay Foreman. Now, like, so who's the second running back? And in my opinion, who's the fucking first running back? I know technically it's Lamar Miller, but it's, in my opinion, Lamar Miller is not a good first running back. So do you make a play for Melvin Gordon? Like I said, I'm not high on Melvin Gordon. I think he's better than Lamar Miller. I would have took him knowing that I had Deontay Foreman, taking him, pairing him up with Lamar Miller, or just taking them all together. I don't know. I guess I'll roll with it if it happened. Like, if, if the trade would happen, I would roll with it. I'd be, all right, cool. I'm not advocating for it right now. Um, I was advocating for it before, but I'm damn sure not doing it now because I'm not. It's one of those moves that, kind of like I said about the Magic in, in, in Westbrook, like, uh, I grit my teeth like, oh, uh, I don't know. I, I don't know really. I don't I don't know about that. I'm cool with it, but I, I don't I'm not all in. And now now the question is offensively what we're gonna do is so we're just gonna be just a passing tech with the offensive line who can't protect Deshaun Watson. Cause we talk about this offensive line. One thing they actually could do was run block. They can actually run block. They can't pass block, but they can actually run block. And I think that mostly uh, we need – now, okay, it's probably the way that we utilize Lamar Miller. I know a lot of people bring it up. Well, it's, it's the way we utilize Lamar Miller. That is true. We do not utilize Lamar Miller correctly, but even still, he just don't have it. Like, he, he just doesn't have – like, he doesn't have the right – like, he doesn't have the right type of steps. He doesn't hit the hole aggressively. Like, he kind of like, – it's not that he tiptoes. He just – he just goes in the hole. He doesn't plant and shot and shot through. And Deontay Foreman at least had that. I think Deontay Foreman, to me, looked better on the field than Lamar Miller. Now, outside the field, in the locker room, in the meeting rooms, I'm not in there. Nobody's in there. All we do is get back what they tell us. And it seems like now there's a lot of Deontay Foreman bashing right now that's going around. Like everybody's talking about Deontay Foreman. Everybody's putting everything on Deontay Foreman. I don't think it's all Deontay Foreman's fault. Is he to blame for some of the things? Yes. If you like for meetings, you're a grown ass man. This is your job. You like for meetings multiple times. That's on you. 
That, that, that's on you, especially knowing how this coaching staff feels about you, how they talked about you, how third round picks look in years past. You say that you and your dad were Texan fans, so you should know about the Jalen Strongs and the uh, Braxton. You was on the team with Braxton Millers and Jalen Strong when they both got cut. So you should see this. You should see these things happening, and you should know, I bet, I'm going to do everything I possibly can to make sure. I should be the, he should be the first one at the meeting. I, I but bump that like the uh, the Bill O'Brien say the meeting is at eight o'clock in the morning. He should have been on NRG at six thirty like this in his car waiting out the door. Y'all gonna let me in? Okay, cool. So as soon as somebody let me in, I'm in. Like knowing how this is, you can't sit there and just be. You can't just do you. You really can't. So that's on him. The, that that's on him. But. It's also on Bill O'Brien. I don't think that they feel comfortable. I think Bill O'Brien just, my, Bill O'Brien is one of those stubborn head guys that once you in his doghouse, you in his doghouse. So I would want to see if what happens if Deshaun got into his doghouse. Like if Deshaun got into his doghouse, if Hot or JJ, because uh, we see what's going, we see what's going on with Clowney. Like if if you get into his doghouse and you those type of players, we gonna do then. Because it's easy. Okay, it's easy. He's a third round pick, second string running back, only had negative one yard. And that's because he only played in one game last year. And it, we all knew he wasn't healthy in that game. Like he looked like he wasn't healthy. He like he he, he completely looked like he wasn't healthy in that play. And that's the reason why he wasn't active in the following game or the playoff game. And I think that they probably needed him more in that playoff game than they did in their last game. And the uh, the game against uh Jacksonville, the last regular season game. So, I'm saying that to say this. Um, though, I don't agree with them cutting him, especially this early. Like, the, the, that, 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 that's the thing that's really the mind-boggling thing. Like, I've heard, oh, they're trying to send a message and all this. You couldn't give him a preseason game first? Because sometimes you cutting off your nose to spite your face. Like, could you at least give him a preseason game first? Like, because you don't have an answer at running back. Uh, Crockett and, and Buddy Howe and these other guys, these other guys, they, they blowing out the water that bad, huh? They out there killing the game like that. We going to see Thursday. We going to see against Green Bay. We, we going to see. And we going to be sitting there looking like, bro, we fucking need a damn running game. I promise you. We're going to be looking like this Friday morning, like, Be yeah, offensive line on the list, had secondary on the list. Running game. This team ain't gonna do shit. That's what people are gonna be feeling like Monday, I mean, not Monday morning, but Friday morning after that first preseason game because do you really have confidence in this running game now? I mean, the offensive line was already bad. Now you putting a bad off. Now you putting bad running backs back there too. Like, what kind of help is you get really giving Deshaun? Yeah, Deshaun got. Yeah, Deshaun has um, Hop. He has Wolf Fuller. He got Kiki. Like I've been telling people before, there's other ways to fix the offensive line and protect your quarterback besides the offensive line. Running game. Running backs who can block. Running game who can take the pressure off of Deshaun because instead of throwing the ball 50 times, you run the ball 25 times. Come on now. I know we all in love with the passing, the 4,000 yards and 50 touchdowns and shit like that. Hey, I'm a Texas Tech fan. So y'all know I love passing the football. But I'm a running back at heart. That's why I play in school. I play running back and I play receiver. I play both. I, I, the last position I played was receiver. I played in the slot. But I'm still a running back at heart. My mindset and my heart is still a running back. So I think you need to run the football. I feel very confidently when you run the football and when you're able to run the football. I don't think this team can run the football outside of number four. Number four can run the ball, I, he, but I don't want my quarterback running no more. I want my quarterback to be standing up straight in the pocket throwing, running when he have to. I don't want him out here. I don't, don't want to be out here running this gimmicky running offense and say your quarterback get killed. I want. I don't want that. Like, share, subscribe if you haven't. Comment below if you haven't. Click that bell. Get more videos. I holler.